welcome. Today I'm going to be telling you all about Divine Mercy Sunday, which is this Sunday, and the three steps you can take to get a plenary indulgence this weekend. I'm going to backtrack a little bit. You may have seen this image before. This is the Divine Mercy image. So I'm going to share a small amount of background with this image and how Divine Mercy Sunday came to be. There was a little Polish nun in the 30s named Faustina Kowalska, and she is said to have been visited by Jesus. She wrote in her diary about these visitations, and one of the themes that kept coming up was mercy. Jesus is mercy, God's mercy. In Faustina's diary, she said that Jesus said to her, I, Jesus, desire the face of my mercy to be a refuge and a shelter for all souls. I am giving them the last hope of salvation. That is the feast of my mercy. But it wasn't smooth sailing to his feast of mercy because Faustina's diary was actually banned for 20 years. There were some political things going on and there was a bad translation and her diary was banned. So it wasn't actually until the year 2000 that she was canonized a saint even though all this happened in the 30s. Amazing. Saint John Paul II is the one that canonized her as saint, and he also dedicated the Sunday after Easter to be the Sunday of Divine Mercy. So that is where we are today. That is this weekend. What does that mean? What can we get out of it? Essentially, Pope John Paul II said that souls could obtain a plenary indulgence on the Feast of Divine Mercy. What is a plenary indulgence? A plenary indulgence is the full remission of the temporal punishment due to sacramentally forgiven sins by the merits of Jesus Christ, the Blessed Virgin, and all the saints. Let me say that in English. Every sin has a consequence. When we sin, no matter what it is, there's some sort of way it affects our life. It disorders our life in some sort of a way. When we get temporal punishment removed, we're actually removing the punishment that is in real time, the punishment that exists in our everyday. You may have heard that if you sin, you're allowing the devil in and your life can kind of start going a little weird. This is what that is correcting. It is correcting that disorder. A plenary indulgence does remove temporal punishment, which can also translate to meaning time off of purgatory, but there isn't a formula of this many masses equals this much time off. There used to be confusion of that in the past, but that's not exactly how it works. So just know you're going and you are ordering your life correctly and you may also get other benefits. This is assuming that you have a contrite heart. You're not interested in sinning more. I hope that makes sense. There is also another type of punishment that is called external punishment. External punishment is serious, grave sin that cuts you out from the life of God and divine grace. We're not dealing with that right now. We're dealing with temporal punishment. So a plenary indulgence can remove temporal punishment. You can think of plenary indulgence as restoring right order. A plenary indulgence can partially remove or fully remove the punishment, temporal punishment due to sin. It depends on how open we are to God's grace. Now that seems really abstract, right? How do we know how open we are? I suppose we don't, but we can make it a goal to just be as open as possible. Let me tell you the three things you need to do this Sunday. Number one, go to mass. Go to mass and participate in the mass. Receive Eucharist that day if it is at all possible. Number two, go to confession. You can go to confession up to 20 days after Divine Mercy Sunday, or it could have been 20 days prior to Divine Mercy Sunday. So your soul needs to be in a state of grace. The closer you do this to Divine Mercy Sunday, the better, but you do have plus or minus 20 days on either end. And that is also for receiving communion, you do have plus or minus 20 days, but ideally on that day, especially communion. Number three, you need to pray for the intentions of the Pope. There is no specific right way to do this, but it is suggested you say a Hail Mary and an Our Father. That's it. Those are the three things that are required to obtain a plenary indulgence on Divine Mercy Sunday. 
I need to add though that all these things must be done with a contrite heart. That is, you want to stay away from sin. You're not thinking about the next time you're gonna do that sin that you like to do. You are having a contrite heart. You truly want to try to be free of sin, detaching yourself from that, and working in cooperation with God's grace to get you in that state of order. Indulgences can be applied to ourselves or others. We can apply this indulgence to those that have passed on already. We can apply indulgences to people that are on earth right now, but if you can think of somebody that has recently passed away, you can apply those indulgences to them. This was incredibly special for me when I first learned about this because oftentimes you feel so helpless when someone passes away and you pray for that person's soul, but this is a very concrete way that you can give a special gift. I sure hope this video has inspired you to go out this Sunday and get a plenary indulgence for yourself or for somebody else. And let us know how we can pray for you in the comments below. There's something so powerful when we're all praying for each other and this community is a great safe place to do that. God bless you. Happy Easter. Take care. Bye.